this is Tableau Zen Master Luke Stanky, and in this video we're going to look at the diverging bar chart. We're just going to hop right in. The diverging bar chart in this example that I have in sh shown in Tableau here, the data we're going to use first comes from the city of Durham from a 2011 survey, and we have 14 questions here around the city and their services, and then there were five responses ranging from very dissatisfied to very satisfied. And the goal here is for us to make it easy to compare the results of any question so that if you look at question Q1C, it's the third line down, you'll see proximity to a fire station. That's one of the more positive values. It stands out as being much higher than the next question, which is maintenance of city streets, which tends to be a little bit more negative. You see that total of the bar sort of a little bit further to the right and the negative uh, responses being further to the left and our neutral responses being centered down the middle of this bar right down the middle and it makes it easy then to see where responses are a little bit higher than others of course we could use a percent of total to compare the positives and the positives and the negative and the negatives that's a hundred percent one way that we can do that and i'm showing them side by side right now both the percent of total versus the, the diverging bar chart, but the, it's just that that diverging bar chart makes it just a little easier to read. So how do we build this calculation? Let's get started and we'll see how it comes together. We're just gonna figure this one out together. So I'm just gonna create a new sheet. I actually am gonna duplicate this because I already have some things filtered out. So we'll duplicate it and let's get rid of everything on our view and we're just going to start from scratch and the way we'll do this is we need to go find our question field and we're going to place that out on our rows shelf so we go find question place it out on rows easy way to start by the way I, right now i'm just going to choose automatic chart type let's go get our responses too and we'll take a look at what we're seeing so we'll take responses and we'll bring that out on our view and then we're just going to create a very simple ad hoc calculation. We're gonna double click and type sum of one. This will give us a count of the number of rows for each of these areas that are broken down. So I'm gonna click and drag that, put that on text, and we can see the, the total number for each row, each response type. So proximity to the fire station, one person is very dissatisfied, and a neutral, and 14 are dissatisfied versus the maintenance of the streets, we have 37 very dissatisfied and 136 dissatisfied folks in the survey that responded to the survey. So how do we turn this into a bar chart? We can just frankly put this on to columns and then take responses and put that on color. And we already have started to build out our visualization. I've already colored the, the responses as well to make this easier. If I wanted to make a percent of total, I could just do a quick table calculation and do a percent of total, right click on that calculation. Once we've added the percent of total, edit the table calculation and say for every question, so uncheck question, give me the percent of total for the responses, which is left checked here. And if I wanted to add a label, I could show the mark label as well. And that would give us a percent of total. Of course, that's only half of what we wanna build here, the second half, becomes a little more difficult in what we'll want to do. We'll want to build this percent total. So we can start there by doing a percent total. Let's create that as a separate calculated field and I'll just center things up here. What we can just say is sum of one is divided by the window sum of the sum of one. And this will be our PCT percent of total. Hit okay now. Let's go find that and verify that it's working. PCT of total. Click drag that out on our view. And once again, edit that table calculation and make sure that we're getting each question to be 100% of that section. So there we go, percent of total. Now, what we need to do is reorder things. And the way that we're gonna, re we're gonna have some values that are negative and some values are positive and they all are dependent on the very first value. So the best thing to do is change this from a bar chart into a Gantt chart. I'm just going to change my chart type to Gantt bar for the time being. You'll notice 
none of my values line up, we're going to have to do something like a running sum. So I'm going to just build a new calculation here. And we'll figure it out as we go. Let's just say running sum of the percent of total calculation we just created. I'm just going to call this our bar start. So that's what we want to do with the Gantt bar, find the start of the bar, bring that out onto our view. Let's edit our table calculation once again, edit table calculation, make sure that our percent of total is correctly selected. So we want for every question, give us the percent of total by response. And then our bar start is going to be the reverse. We're going to want to get the aggregates by question here. And frankly, we don't want this yeah, there we go. So it's starting to show up correctly. However, this isn't quite right. We want all the bars to start at the same point and they need to aggregate from the previous value. So if we need to use the previous values, we're going to do a lookup. We're going to do minus one. Then we're going to wrap this in zero null to make sure that we get the starting values starting all together. I'll hit apply here. And this should be, whoops, this whole time I'm looking at it going, what's going on? But this is our bar start. Our bar start is a running sum, and we'll see that each of these sort of add up to be the correct value. And I'll take this percent of total off of columns and I'll place it on size. And we'll see that what we've done now with this calculation of this percent of total, then running sum, then lookup, and then zero null, is we've essentially reversed the order of our responses from positive to negative. And the order of these are actually based on what we see in our color legend. If I change the order of these values, it's going to change in the legend. So we're going to want to put our negative values first and then our positive values last, and that'll go right to left accordingly with the calculation that we created for bar start. Notice, again, they're the same chart. One is a bar chart, and then the other is a Gantt bar. So we created this as a Gantt bar. I'll do it one more time just to showcase that same process. We're going to create a new calculated field. We're going to use that percent of total. We're going to do a running sum of it, of our percent of total. We're going to do, that's going to, yeah, and I'll just hit apply on calc three here, and we'll just use calculation three as a point of reference. If I change this mark type to Gantt bar, which is what we want to use, we are basically starting from the first, the end of the first value. So we, if we looked at, and I've got to get this percent of total rolling correctly, it's going in the wrong direction of this table calculation. Percent of total, checking for every question, give me the percent of total. And then our table, other table calculation needs to be within each question. So for every question, give me this percent of total. And uh, yeah, when we look at this, our, these are the endpoints. That makes sense. We wouldn't want to have our bars start at this point. We'd want them to end there. So we could actually use percent of total, by the way, this running sum percent of total. We could use this value. It would be 100% acceptable. And in fact, let's just call this, what this will end up being isn't the bar start, but the bar end. So this is a, an alternative to solving this problem. In the previous way that we just did, this was the bar start. For the bar end, instead of doing a percent of total, what we need to do is the negative percent of total. So negative percent of total, and we'll place that on size and it'll push the lines backwards. And what we end up with out of this is, by the way, these values are all incorrectly labeled. We just want the percent of total label. So I can just double click bring percent of total. The result is a percent of total. From there, we just need to do some quick formatting. So I'm just gonna right click, and then we'll choose format. Whoops, click, let's try this again. Pick the right thing to format. And we'll format this up as a percentage. No decimal places, and we're set. Now to do the diverging portion of this is relatively simple. We just need to shift everything to the left just a little bit. The way we do this is create a separate calculation that sort of would give us the that basic starting point. And we'll do that by calculating a percentage. And that percentage requires us to do two window sums. So we'll just say window sum, and we'll say if contains, if we have any 
dissatisfied values. So if the responses are dis, then one. Else if our responses are equal to neutral, then 0.5, because we want them like halfway adjusted. And then we say else zero and and we'll do two parentheses. So for the window sum and the sum. And we're gonna divide that by the window sum of the sum of one. That's it. And this is just gonna be called our start point. And I already have a calculation that's called this because I practiced it beforehand. So we'll pretend, I'll save it off. X this out. So go find our bar start, click edit, and then I'm just going to subtract the start point, hit apply. Again, it's broken. That should be an option in here. There it is, start point. Don't know why it didn't show up. Yeah, I edited the bar end. Anyway, we're just going to say for every question, give us the essentially that, that number for the responses, and that is our solution. I can drag this off of here. We can go find percent of total. We can place that on label and um, control Z, try that again, size and this label, and there we go. There it is. There is our percent of total as a diverging bar chart, which to me makes sense on how some of our users would want to use this. Anyway, thank you for tuning in to this Build This Viz tutorial. If you did find an ounce of value in this video, be sure to like and subscribe to see future recordings as they come out, coming out almost daily for you. And lastly, don't forget to check out datacoach.com for some of our upcoming discounts. We're going to extend our current discount for everyone. We currently only have two days left on our current special, but we're going to have an extra uh, little extension of that just for all of you anyway thanks again and we'll catch you in the next video and if you have any ideas for videos you do want to see by the way be sure to comment down below and we'll make those videos we'll get them in line we've got about a hundred planned and if we're going to go for the end of the year we're going to need far more ideas so place your ideas down in the comments and we'll add it to our list thanks and have a great day